Hello, and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today, I'm unboxing the biggest of the new ELAC Varo range, the PS500. Look at the size of the thing. It's huge. 15 inches. It gets down to 20 hertz in an anechoic chamber. It'll sound deeper than that in a house. It's so big, I'm going to have to kind of move it around just so we can say hi. Okay, so 115 dB. In fact, I think it's even sort of, there we go, printed on the box. This features ELAC's biggest bash subwoofer amplifier, 500 watts, um, actually hence the name. The PS500 is their 500 watt sub. The PS250 is their 250 watt and 350 and so on. But the nature of the bash amplifier means that that's such a conservative rating. And at any, any moment of peak dynamics, it'll easily deliver double its rated wattage. So realistically, it's a 1,000 watt amplifier. It's a huge box. You can see that. It's going to be a huge subwoofer. But the beauty of it, even if it's massive and you have to stick it in the corner somewhere, is the new uh, version 3 control app enables you to be able to uh, configure this from the comfort of your living space. Sit at your couch, sit at your sitting, listening chair, whatever it might be, and dial into every element of its setup and get this damn thing sounding perfect without having to leave your seat. So, this particular one I've alluded to, 15 inches, it's huge. It uses a 2 inch voice coil. It's got all of the control you would ever need because if it's 15 inches, let's be honest, you're not going to want this thing flapping in the breeze. It's got to sound tight, it's got to sound precise and that's exactly what they've delivered at a really, really good budget price point. So, let's have a look. ELAC PS500. We've got the basic information associated with model, serial number, scanning and, and things on one end. Some basics about stacking and freight and all of those things. Got a basic line drawing along with information about the app and its peak output. Again an emulation of its model number and the fact it's part of their premium series subwoofers. And again model and serial number on the other end. It's huge. So, bear with me as I spend some time unboxing it. Now, opening the freight carton is pretty straightforward. I mean, this is uh, you know, traditional packing tape. Very, very easy as far as being able to get it open. The first thing that we will see is the accessories. Now, it's tucked behind a basic folded piece of cardboard. Okay, so there it is. And this is talking about um, some of the inputs and outputs and how to get the most out of it. Okay. And then sort of sandwiched between uh, the manual is the New Zealand IEC power cord. A um, desiccant bag to keep it dry. There's a basic setup guide along with a few other things associated with a user manual. Now this manual is for the 250, 350 and 500 because obviously it's set up is identical. It's just about the performance outcome that changes. It's worth mentioning, and please, I've got some close-up photographs of this in the PS250. The spikes, they're really good quality, big spikes designed to anchor this subwoofer through the carpet into the hard surfaces beneath. But it also has a series of feet, and feet ensuring that it will uh, competently uh, be chatter-free on any hardwood surface or tiled surface as well. Okay, now, as you'll know, with anything that's kind of big, the first advice I always give people is don't try and lift the product out of the box, roll the box over, and lift this massive box off the subwoofer. Okay. Now, half the polystyrene stayed in the box, saving me a job. What we see though, is that the grill is set uh, at the front there, and then we've got a, a large polystyrene bag 
to protect the uh, base of the subwoofer. It's in transit. Now with the 250 and the uh, 350, they have a single port. Um, this has two. So I'm going to tilt it over before I roll it. Okay. Now twin ports, because of course this is moving so much air. Now the ports themselves are huge, but they're also very long, ensuring that they pass through all the bracing and other things like that and leave the subwoofer driver to breathe properly and exert all of the control you would expect as far as the main drive unit. Please also pause and have a look at the feet that they've added. These actually have rubber pads on them to ensure that if they are on that hardwood floor, they stick and grip. And you'll see that when I stick it back on the surface, how difficult it is to move. Now uniquely, this is the thing I'll show you before I turn it over. See this little thing here? It's a subtly recessed power light. Unlike many subwoofers which blare at you some you know, bright blue or bright red power indicator or a massive LCD display. Elac have left the setup to an app and the power to a little subtle recessed LED in the bottom to give a little glow in a room to let you know that it's on rather than something kind of prominent and perhaps distracting in the room. Wonderful to see in such an affordable subwoofer. Okay, now rolling it over very carefully and discarding the last of the polystyrene. Huge thing. We'll see a little bit of um, closed cell foam used to protect the accessories and then we lift this off and we see this massive subwoofer for the first time. It's ginormous. Look at it. And with the rubber feet you can see that I struggle to sort of slide it across on the table. Now, 15 inch driver. Huge annulus. Huge excursion. Look at that. It's got to be plus or minus an inch at least. Yet, they haven't forgotten all the refinements associated with what's going to be required. Even this textured surround is designed to manage the frequency uh, or, or uh, sound wave into the room. Uh, we saw this first in the Vela bookshelf and floor standing speakers and we see it now used in a really affordable subwoofer so it's brilliant that that kind of thing has trickled down. We see four rubber um, sort of inserts associated with where the grill is going to go and then front and centre the ELAC logo behind a little bee protective sort of layer. It's ginormous, rock solid uh, woofer and no expense spared as far as the materials used in such an affordable subwoofer. Looking at it, so, so shuffle it around, we see that the curves, sorry, the edges of this are actually curved. Now part of that is to ensure that the subwoofer's uh, cabinet is really, really well braced. Essentially a subwoofer is moving so much air and potentially vibrating that the cabinet itself and management of standing waves and all sorts of resonance in the cabinet, if they're left to just some cheap hard edged box, you can end up with issues associated with uh, vibration and resonance within the cabinet. This is hugely well built and a real surprise in build quality given its affordable price. Now, again, lifting and Chucking it around, we see the back of the amplifier where the inputs and outputs are. So firstly, we'll see that it actually has off to one side the two inputs associated with it. Now one of them is clearly labelled, and that's the right hand one, or red one, is clearly labelled LFE, or low frequency effect. That's the input to utilise from a theatre amplifier. If you're using a stereo setup, like a preamp or an integrated amplifier with a stereo pre-out, then that's the best time to connect the two using a long uh, stereo interconnect both left and right. If your amplifier has a, sub a dedicated subwoofer output I guess you could sort of mix and match and you decide whether or not you're best to send a mono signal to this subwoofer or let this dual it to uh, mono with a stereo signal input. Beside it is a very simple LED and now that's associated with Bluetooth pairing and it blinks when it goes into pairing mode and is part of the startup. We see a reset button, now that's associated again with resetting the amplifier so that it goes looking for your phone to pair with for the setup app. 
Then we've got a rear USB for the purposes of software updating, and I think it's uh, got enough current to be able to deliver power to a uh, wireless receiver if required. Then we've got a basic rotary encoder associated with adjusting the volume. Now the entire back plate is actually utilised as a heatsink associated with the amplification itself. It's not an unusual technique, but you'll feel that that will get warm at peak loads, and that's kind of to be expected. Then we see some basic information associated with uh, electrical warnings. We've got the model information and ELAC branding, and then scanning associated with the serial number. Beneath the serial number, we've got a basic rocket rocker switch for power on and off, and the IEC plug or socket for the power. It's actually a fused product, so uh, there's a fuse and a spare one actually in a little plastic holder beneath. So that's a nice little touch from a quality perspective for something of this uh, 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 affordability and budget sort of price point. Spinning it around again, we're going to have a little look at that drive unit. Before I pause and have a look at the grill. Now interestingly, and I guess sorry to repeat myself if you keep watching these videos, but there's a few cool little features in the packaging that ELAC have always introduced. One of them, when grills and other delicate things are packaged, they offer a little bit of an overlap with the cardboard to ensure that if you cut it, like I did with a craft knife, there's no potential for you to end up dragging the knife across the product inside the box itself. So it allows you to, with confidence, sort of get this thing open and get the grill out, knowing that you're not going to damage the product. So, get rid of that. Now the grill is acoustically transparent, and as you'll probably see as I turn it around, it's braced very, very heavily around it to ensure that the grill material is held taut. It won't rattle or vibrate because it's a combination of a few things standing off this grill from the woofer itself and also a really significant grip with the plugs that you see. It looks extremely elegant and has a slightly larger version of the ELAC logo. Fitting it's really straightforward and lining that up and again even though it's a high excursion drive unit it's not going to sit there and hit that, uh, that um, cloth so that's important as well. So there we have it, ELAC's brand new uh, PS500, 15 inch, 115 dB, gets well below 20 Hz. It's got the bash amplifier on board, it's got the setup app, it's such an easy product to get the most out of. So here we are, so proud to have shared it with this unboxing channel here at the listening post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.